Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today I'm going to talk about how to animate animation node. I think this is a very basic but also very important question people are going to have about animation node because the whole principle to work with animation node sometimes is to make animation. There are some issues with keyframes and I will discuss later. Before the tutorial actually start, uh, if you hit T and open a panel, you can see the auto execution. The default is always turn this always off on. But I will remind you to turn this always off. The reason is that uh, if you turn this always on, then it will execute the node tree as many times as possible. So even if now I'm not doing anything with these node trees, it's still running. So it's wasting of powers. So instead, let's turn this always off and turn other options on so that it does not burn your computer. In terms of trigger, I will uh, discuss this later. But uh, you can either copy the triggers or you can know this from menus currently. So let's start the tutorial. So what's the problem with the animation? So this is a very basic setup. I'm using a object transform output node to change the location of our object. It can also talk about the rotation and the scales. And if I would like to animate the entire whole thing, I might think, oh, let's hit an I to add a keyframe and uh, change its value, hit another I. Uh, firstly, you can see there's no keyframes in the timeline. So even if I select the node, there's nothing shows up. And just now I added the two keyframes, but if I go to the other keyframes, you can see there's the, the value does not change. So in short, the keyframe does not work. It's just a more function. I don't know if this will actually be fixed or not because this has been very long time. Maybe there's some reason that you cannot add a keyframe for that, but anyway. So how to solve this issue? There are many different ways. Uh, a very dumb way is just to use the time info node. If you put the frames into locations, then it will generate a combined vector node because the location is a vector of x, y, z. So by doing that, the x cube will go to infinity. If you would like to make it stop at some level, you can add a clamp. Like max 10, so it will stop at 10 meters away on x. And basically, this is how to animate this. But this method also definitely seems kind of dumb. There's another way. If you control A and search animate, there will pop up several choices. Animate metrics, animate vector, float, color, ULA, quotidian, whatever stuff. The location is a vector, so we take an animate vector. You can know more from the menu. Basically, they follow the same principle. There is also some advanced usage with these nodes I will discuss in the part two of the tutorial, but today is mainly to solve the problem. So if I put this result into location, if I put the frame into time, and you, you can define the start and the end, and you can also define duration. So now this is stop at 20 frames. This node does not seem very different from what the setup which we just did, but however, there's a very important feature, which is the interpolation. So you can take the curve interpolation and plug that in. Uh, so in short, the x-axis is the time and the y-axis is the starting at the end. By the way, this node no longer works in Blender 2.81 due to some changes to accommodate the developments for Blender 2.82 and above and so on and so forth. So if you have any issue with this curve interpolation node, just upgrade your Blender. And as I just said, uh, the principle of curve interpolation, meaning that if I just uh, try to switch the start at the end, then it will go from end to start, go backwards. This is kind of a very interesting thing. Oh, by the way, also another thing is the curve interpolation does not update the tree very well. So you either turn always on or you just uh, change your frame to update node tree, and so on. There are many different ways to do that. Uh, there's also other ways to play around like this curve interpolation, like just uh, making this kind of interpolation, and it will just start, end, and it goes to start again. So you can play with curve interpolation. But uh, in short, if I were to make a conclusion, there are some circumstances this animated node series will be very interesting and useful. But other cases, this is not recommended to use because I've tried this and it makes my life miserable. Uh, the reason I think is it's, it's just not as 
easy to visualize as the keyframes. So it goes to the most principal questions. Is that possible to keyframe the animation if I'm making things with animation node? There is ways. There's another which is called object to transform input. And I just I made a controller within the control collection. So I'm hitting this controller. If I put the locations into locations, uh, let's just simply just scale up our empty controller. So this controller can be anything, even a cube, a sphere, it, it's the same. I just need to use their transform output. You can also use the customized property, but I think uh, using these values is easy to reach, especially all values are located together. So now I'm using the location to change the location of the cube. Uh, be aware if I don't add a trigger, if I disable the trigger, then the, the movement of this controller will not update the tree very well. So you, you need to update the trigger either with the objects or collection. So this is the idea. So in the collection of controls, the objects, location, scale, and the rotation ruler will update the node tree. And this is what's right happening here. So, so now if I'm moving this controller, then I'm updating the location of the cube as well. You can also then use the scale, but it's just not easy to visualize. It's the same principles. Uh, meaning that I can simply just hit the keyframes and the, to keyframe the controller, and I also start to have the access to graph editor. So I think I think it's very easy to visualize if you're going to control that for a lot. There is a node which is called a wiggle series. So if you just type the wiggle, there's wiggle action, wiggle fall off, number wiggle, ruler wiggle, and so on and so forth. Vector wiggle is a very useful node. See so if I put the locations, then it will just firstly it will randomly generate a vector. And you can by changing the evolution, it will just move around. Sometimes this is a very interesting node that to work with. In that case, if I'm putting this location into evolution, because the location is a three number that contains x, y, z, but the evolution only needs one number, so it's just a separate vector. Very straightforward. And you, as I said earlier, you can simply keyframe that, like make it 100 keyframe, and you're animating that. And so on and so forth. And Sometimes you can use the scale as well, like separate the vector and to change other value like the speeds, octaves, persistence, even the seeds, whatever things you like. But uh, in the long run, if I always need to add separate the vector and object transform input, it might make the things more chaotic. That's why I made a preset for myself uh, called controller. It's basically a group node that contains all these functions, location x, and output with a single values, location x, y, z, and so on and so forth. And I'm going to talk about how to make these presets very quick. So if I have a group input, let's input, hit this plus and input an object. And I'm basically copy this node, object into object and hit this output node and take x, y, z into that. So you can name them as you wish just to get a simple idea. It does not really matter. I'm not going to continue this. The whole point is there's two ways to call up this preset. So let's first name it as a controller uh, preset. Uh, one way is to hit W, goes to right. You invoke the subprogram. Then you got this preset. You can evoke that as many times as possible. It does not really matter. You can even duplicate that. It does not really matter. Or you can simply type. Uh, you can simply click, click Control A and uh, take the controller preset. So you get that. If you're really making this as a preset, you need to have that in your project file. So, so you can either save that as a startup or just uh, append the node tree. But I don't think append the node tree is very useful. I usually keep them at the startup file. And so on and so forth. Um, 
I really think this no this preset is very useful. So I hope it's useful to you. I hope uh, this tutorial explained the question about how to animate animation nodes. Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.